Hello everybody. Today we are going to discuss the specific heat of solids for many reasons. Firstly, this is a very interesting story as you will see shortly. Secondly, this is one of the first instances when quantum mechanics based ideas were important and essential to explain the curious behavior of the specific heat of solids. And thirdly, extensions to this discussion is going to allow us to familiarize ourselves with uh, some of the key notions that we will encounter later on in future lectures such as band structure, quantization and so forth. So let us start off with some definitions. So the specific heat of uh, a material is defined as the amount of heat you need to supply to that material to one mole of that material to increase its temperature by one degree. There are two types of specific heats, the specific heat at constant volume and the specific heat at constant pressure. In this discussion we are going to deal with the specific heat at constant volume. This story begins in uh, the year 1819 when two Frenchmen, Dulong and Petit, made an unexpected discovery. They were measuring the specific heat of various materials, a dozen metals and sulfur and a couple of other materials. And they found that the, the value of the specific heat that they measured were the same thing, pretty much the same thing. It was about uh, 6 calories per mole per degree. And uh, this curious observation made them to conclude that the specific heat for all solids and... Uh, gases where uh, was about 6 calories per mole per degree and for uh, many years a few decades after that um, people the scientific community was thinking that this was indeed the case until uh, people began to measure the specific heat of diamond and different people measured the specific heat of diamond and uh, they got different values, all well below 6 calories per mole per degree. The most extensive such measurements uh, were made by two people, uh, Weber and Dewar. And uh, both these gentlemen uh, made uh, measurements over a wide range of temperatures and they found that at the very high temperature limit of their measurements, the specific heat of diamond did approach the Dulong pitted value, but at lower temperatures, the specific heat systematically dropped down to low values and indicating that it may be going towards zero. So the plot of, uh, so essentially, the, the finding was that the specific heat was not a constant uh, with respect to temperature. So it was a temperature dependent quantity and uh, it, it looked somewhat like this. In the meantime, in the 1870s or so, Ludwig Boltzmann comes up with a classical explanation for why this could be happening, for this curious behavior of the specific heat as a function of temperature. First of all, he was able to explain the high temperature behavior using classical theory. So he used the classical equipartition theorem, which basically states that each... Uh, quadratic degree of freedom uh, contributes an energy of one half kT. So to start with, Boltzmann assumed that uh, uh, a solid is composed of let's say n atoms and each atom is bound to the solid by a harmonic force or a potential and atoms are vibrating in the solid as it is heated. and uh, uh, assuming that uh, each one constitutes a three-dimensional oscillator, uh, the equipartition theorem basically states that um, the average energy of each oscillator is 3 kT. The factor 3 uh, comes from the fact that it's a three-dimensional system and uh, kT is really composed of one half kT from the kinetic energy and another half kT from the potential energy. So that gives you three 
kT for the average energy of the system. Now since you have n atoms in the system, um, the total energy is 3 n kT and if you have one mole of atoms, then it's going to be 3 kT times the Avogadro number. So that's the total average energy at any given temperature. In order to define, determine the specific heat, you take that expression and find the first derivative with respect to temperature and you are left with 3nk. Since n is the Avogadro number, n times k is the universal gas constant and so the specific heat at constant volume works out to 3r. Right. So let's uh, write this down. Okay, so this argument establishes that uh, the specific heat of a solid should be 3R, which is approximately equal to 6 calorie per mole per degree. And so it explains the original findings of Dulong and Petit. And so this, uh, this, this height, this value 3R at, for the specific heat, specific heat at high temperatures is called the Dulong Petit limit. So the classical theory is still not able to explain why the specific heat actually drops to small values approaching zero as you decrease temperature. That explanation was provided by Einstein and we are going to talk about that next. So this was the year 1906 and Einstein uh, stumbles onto this problem uh, of the specific heat of solids and uh, he applies uh, quantum uh, Planck's quantum theory of uh, radiation to solids uh, for the first time. So quantum theory uh, requires that the energy of an oscillator is quantized. That is, it cannot take on any value uh, for an oscillator of a frequency nu or omega. Uh, the energy of the oscillator has to be an integer multiple of h bar omega. So this was uh, uh, Planck's uh, uh, theory and h bar of course is uh, Planck's constant and uh, Einstein uh, sought to use this idea to explain the specific theory, a uh, specific heat of solids. So here is the uh, energy expression uh, for, a, for an oscillator uh, within quantum theory. Right? So the energy is quantized, n is an integer, h bar is uh, Planck's constant. Uh, h bar is really equal to h divided by 2 pi where h is the really the Planck's constant uh, and omega is the angular frequency of the oscillator uh, omega equals 2 pi nu and nu is the frequency for the sake of the sticklers of quantum mechanics I do want to point out that uh, this equation that I wrote earlier epsilon n equals n h bar omega is not entirely correct because the zero point uh, uh, motion contribution to the energy is ignored in that expression but at that time in 1906 this was the expression that was uh, known and used if you want to include the zero point motion contribution then uh, you need to use uh, uh, this uh, this expression over here um, n plus one half times h bar omega is the energy however um, the discussion on specific heat will not depend on the zero point motion uh, and so it doesn't really, it, it did not really matter that this term was omitted as we will actually see shortly. Okay, so given the expression, this expression, we can now compute the average energy of an oscillator in thermal equilibrium with all the other oscillators of the system using statistical mechanics. And the expression that you see down there for epsilon bar is exactly that. The exponential factor e to the minus epsilon n over kt is really a probability factor. And when you perform uh, the two summations and evaluate this expression for epsilon bar, you essentially get the average energy of an oscillator. And that quantity works out to be the following. 
So there we have it. So this is the expression for the average energy of an oscillator at a certain temperature. It is actually quite easy to see that uh, at uh, very high temperatures this expression reduces to kT provided we included the zero point term which we show here graphically but it can also be shown analytically quite easily. So here is the plot. The red line is the classical result where epsilon bar is equal to kT so it's linear with respect to t going through zero and the other two curves the solid blue curve is uh, uh, the quantum mechanical result Einstein's result uh, without the zero point term and the dashed blue curve is the one uh, when you include the zero point term. And you can see that there is a difference of uh, uh, one half h bar omega and you can also see that the quantum mechanical curve with the zero point term approaches the classical result at high temperatures. The fact that the quantum mechanical result without the zero point term um, is different uh, from the other two results even at high temperatures is not a problem as far as the specific heat is concerned because the specific heat is nothing but the derivative the first derivative of the energy with respect to temperature uh, essentially the slope of this curve is what is related to the specific heat and you can see that the slopes of all three curves the red curve as well as the uh, two blue curves mm, is actually the same at high temperatures and so the high temperature specific heat is correct regardless of whether you include the zero point term or not. So the discussion so far deals primarily with 1D oscillators. So Einstein next made the assumption that a 3D solid containing one mole of atoms let's say can be represented by 3NA identical uncoupled springs, all of them vibrating at the same frequency, omega, omega E. So these, these are key assumptions. So Einstein makes the giant leap, right? He makes the giant leap that uh, the solid is composed of a bunch of atoms and they are all connected to each other through springs and these springs are quantum mechanical in nature. Um, in other words, they obey the laws of quantum mechanics, they, their, the, their energy cannot take on any value, they are quantized. Right? So that is the leap that Einstein took. And then the assumption that he made after taking that leap is that these are all identical springs that compose the solid and they all oscillate at the same frequency omega e and that is something that we call as the Einstein frequency. Later on, it, very soon, it became known that that was a, that was that was not not a very good assumption, and but but that could be improved upon quite easily. Although it was not a great assumption, it was sufficient. It was it was it was able to capture the essential physics of what was really going on with the specific heat. So, with those expressions, with those assumptions, we can uh, write down the total energy of this uh, system composed of Na atoms can be written as uh, written as this. This is nothing but uh, 3Na times the uh, times the average uh, energy of, of the oscillator that we discussed earlier which is uh, which is over here. Okay. Where omega of course is replaced by omega e the Einstein frequency, the characteristic frequency of oscillation of all of the springs within our solid. So, so Einstein makes that leap, calculates the uh, uh, total energy of the system composed of a collection of three Na uh, oscillators, uh, and then uh, the next step, of course, is to first find the first derivative of the energy with respect to temperature, and we get our uh, specific heat. Uh, uh, expression which is which is that so it's got 3 r up front multiplied by a bunch of temperature dependent uh, quantities which we can now plot and explore further before we show a plot of the specific heat versus temperature 
uh, let us uh, make a slight change of variables let's define a new variable theta e which is called as the Einstein temperature and uh, theta e is defined in this manner uh, so k times uh, the Einstein temperature equals h bar times the Einstein frequency so we are trading omega e for theta e and we substitute uh, uh, that in, in this expression for the specific heat and we get this new expression for the specific heat. So there is only one parameter that's involved in this expression for the specific heat. There is only one free parameter, right? That on, one free parameter is the uh, uh, Einstein temperature. Or if you use this expression here, it's the Einstein frequency. So by what Einstein was able to show was that by properly choosing this one parameter, the Einstein temperature, he was able to get a good fit to uh, the specific heat data that was available for diamond across a wide range of temperatures, which is what I'm going to show right now. And uh, here is the plot of the specific heat as a function of temperature. For uh, two different choices of uh, the Einstein temperature, the the squares, the solid squares, uh, of course, is uh, data, actual experimental data. And the lines represent uh, the curves of using generated using Einstein's model for two different choices of the temperature. Now, this story uh, is not uh, done yet. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there were uh, some assumptions uh, buried in uh, Einstein's uh, approach. Uh, which was uh, soon after that uh, uh, fixed by Dubai. And, uh, and, and, and so the story continues. More later. Thank you.